guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, yes, I've been doing a lot of garage selling. We've been going to auctions. I haven't really been in the thrift stores too awful much. So some of the items that I have been out doing yard selling and sailing, what's the terminology there? But yes, I not a lot of the items do I have to make over, just clean up, resell. Yeah, it's kind of nice. But in today's video, these are some larger items that I picked up. I didn't show in the day before's haul because, uh, I don't know, they're kind of furniture pieces, but I thought, you know what? I want to get these made, made over. Chris has an item in here that he is super excited about, an item that he has been looking for. And of course, it's the ginger chick away of the items being needy. And oh my gosh, wait until this video. <laughs> There were some people here, or some, yeah, I don't even know how to word it. I'm trying to live it rent free in this video. Oh my goodness. So, wait till you see what happens to me in this video. So, Over, it's going to be these little trays and I had just picked out six that I thought were okay they sell for nothing and it's been years ago since they sold when we looked them up on eBay so I'm going to make them look like enamel wear but first I'm going to cover up the image using some of the red primer and oh, I have a bad can <sighs> Oh, don't you hate that when you get a bad can uh, so yes I'm going to spray that over to cover up the design that's on the front of these Also, when I was picking out the six, I was looking for the ones that weren't rusted and crusted on the bottom. I wanted to have a smooth bottom. I don't think I need to cover those up with the primer at all. So I'm just going to go in with that Farm Implements, which is really good for metal. Now it's a little bit on the glossy side, but I want to make these look like enamel wear. So I'm going to go ahead and give them, and this covers, this Farm Implement Play covers up metal really well. So one cover coat on each side should be plenty. The one thing I do notice with this farm implement paint is it takes a lot longer to dry. So it took two days to do this one side. I sprayed once and let it dry overnight. The second side I sprayed and then let that dry overnight. Now this is into the third day and now I can paint on my line. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store. Now the first coat is just kind of just going to be almost see-through it's just going to make that first line and then the next coat will give the first coat will give the second coat something to grab onto and then if I need to touch up any areas with the third coat but I'm using the ready to use black onyx paint you don't want any paint that you're going to have to seal because the farm implements has a sealer already so it will crackle if you try to put any type of top coat over it yep been there tried that I was very happy to run across these two four pane windows. Now, these are just a clean up, put a cute little wreath with them that somebody can interchange. But as you see, they are very chippy. There looks to be only one layer of paint on there. Four panes, I really don't come across this size very often. So $5 a piece, a great deal. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and sand that chippiness off, take any of that chippiness off. I always like to give my windows a freshening up. Both these windows both still have the rubber seal where the two windows would have made a seal. So I'm gonna, this one really did not want to come out. It was so old, it was just disintegrating as soon as I touched it. So I tried to do my best cleaning it up. And on the other one, I was able just to pull that one right off. 
I'm gonna go ahead and tape off both sides. I like to put a fresh coat of paint on both sides, seal anything in, stop any chippiness from happening. I just like to have something clean against somebody's wall. So yep, now it's time to tape off on the both sides. And I know you can scrape paint off but I just prefer to give myself just a little bit of work. And actually, these are probably the cleanest caulking windows. They must have only ever been painted once. Maybe they were from a shed or something that they had never really even been recalked. I I'm telling you, these are the cleanest panes I've ever dealt with. Now after I get them good and cleaned and they have dried, I'm going in and freshening up that paint color using the Kills Paint and Primer, just my go-to white. I buy it right off the shelf. I actually have to travel to a Walmart out of town to now find this paint. My local one does not carry it anymore, but I will do both sides and I'll give them two coats. Now, after both sides are dry, I'm going to go ahead and take some 220 sandpaper. I want to make them look old and chippy. Even though they were old and chippy, there was they were dirty. So I do like to clean them up. So I'm going to go in and distress some of those sharp edges, the detail on the floor pane. Yep, like I said, I just want them to look old and chippy, but clean. And I really only have minimal where maybe I didn't push the tape down hard enough <laughs> to clean up the line. But look at that is probably the cleanest line I've ever had to deal with. Oh, I, I like that. I would love more of old windows that look like that. But I know they've usually been painted quite a few times. I'll just get both sides cleaned up now that I've got all that paint chipped away and vacuum that up. Just wipe it down and then use that wonderful Norwex cloth to make them nice and shiny. Now before attaching a wreath of any sort, any kind of hanging system on the front for the wreath, I'm going to go in and put a hanging system on the back. Now what I like to do is I like to flip my window so the bigger side is toward the, towards the top. That way I can hide my hanging system. So I'm just trying to center it in the middle of these four panes with these eyelet hooks. Then I'll put some 17 gauge wire so that it's nice and strong because even though these are smaller windows, windows are heavy. If you watched my Wednesday's video, you would have saw a wonderful, amazing yard sale that had tents that 11 families were. So I actually went back on Saturday on the way past the auction, <laughs> as I said earlier. Yep, this is a $5 mirror I picked up. And I am in desperate need of mirrors and wall decor. And I've been looking for this type of mirror to try out this type of design. Oh, but this is where it gets a little bit on the ugly side. So as I started to remove this, they had left everything out overnight. Did you see that bog? Oh my gosh. As I started to work on to remove the hanging system, darn it all is not really what I said, but all of a sudden earwigs just started coming out of the back of this mirror. And as I'm yelling for Chris to open the garage door so I can get this out, these little critters, oh my gosh, I almost rather have had that ashes left in the candlesticks. <laughs> but I got it outside, I got it taken apart, and oh my goodness, luckily none got into my car, but yeah, they had left this out overnight, the three days of the garage sale, and little critters found their little happy home. And earwigs, if you know what they are, they're just ugly little critters, but no, I got a good and cleaned and the only bonus is I get to see that this mirror was made in 1965. Yes I did get this one but I'm not doing that one in the video. I was just double checking that there wasn't any friends in there either. <laughs> 
Well, this is what I always say. If flipping items was easy, everybody would do it because that probably would have done some people over. Not that I wasn't freaked out by any means. And I did not want bugs in our shop. We yeah we live in between the lakes i've shared that with you before and yes we have enough bugs on our own that we don't need anybody traveling to visit with us and they're definitely not living here rent free so now i can reattach the back i cleaned everything up like i said they probably just got there while they was sitting out for the garage sale and i know on the first day they had a whole bunch of doors and windows and other stuff lined against their front porch so nobody ever does anything like that on purpose but anyway yep i'm gonna make sure I give this one a really good cleaning. I've really been wanting to find the right type of mirror to try this on. Now, I kind of toyed with maybe doing some resin molds, but uh, no, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> right now so I just ordered these wooden appliques off of Amazon because that's easier to link for you all if you like this look and you have this type of flat but yeah, I needed that flat framed mirror to do this on So yep, this is the perfect amount. It came with the one bigger one, the four corner ones. So now I'm using the quick and thick tight bond glue to adhere these on. Now this dries clear, so I'm going to put a generous amount on. I wanna make sure that these appliques are not going to have a space in between where they've lifted. I wanna make sure that they are one solid piece that they kind of look like they've always been there. So this is just an applicating brush that helps you apply the glue. It's silicone, so once the glue dries on it, you can just peel it off. Or if you're like me, sometimes you just use your finger and wash it. Before clamping it down, I definitely want to make sure that I am centered and I'm hoping that I have clamps that are thick enough <laughs> or open up enough to clamp these down because yeah, I've got five different little areas here that I need to clamp, but if not, I can always use some masking tape, but I want to make sure that every piece of this is nice and flat and it, the glue is adhering to it. those dry overnight and nope I didn't have enough type of those type of clamps to use so I did use some masking tape just pulled it really nice and tight and that seemed to do the job so now these appliques are raw wood so I need to seal them in so that they don't absorb the paint differently and look like they've been added on so I'm going to give them a cup of culture shellac to even out the porosity of that raw wood now that my two coats of shellac are dry, I'm going to go ahead and prime the entire thing using Rust-Oleum's Paint and Primer in the black for a nice undercoat to make everything an even color underneath. Here's where I'm stepping outside my box a little bit. Yep, you do see a gold metallic paint. Yes, I'm trying to copy the brass look that's really in on mirrors right now. I've thrifted a few and then resold them in our booth quickly. The same day I put them in, they sold. So I thought it would be fun to try this technique, trying to find this type of mirror to put appliques on. So I know that this is probably going to be bright and I didn't feel as if I just painted this on top of the wood that it would all match. That's why I felt I needed to undercoat it. <laughs> so, yep, we're, this is going to be nice and bright at first, but I do have a way that I can tone this down. And if you guessed, Rub and Buff, yep, I am going to use Rub and Buff. Now I have the gold leaf and I have an antiquing gold, antique gold. Um, yeah, so I'm going to mix the two together because I think the gold leaf is kind of similar to what 
the frame is right now but then I also think that the antique gold will make it look like the previous mirror that I showed in another flip um, I don't want it to look that orangey so I'm mixing the two together and yep I've just got a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree store and I'm going to go ahead and apply it and I already know that I'm liking the color Just like it says, I need to wipe off any of the excess. So rub and buff it is. So put it on and then buff the excess off. After the mirror is all clean, I'm going to go back in and <laughs> return that hanging system. Oh, I just got a little bit of nightmare of how I started when I tried to remove the old hanging system on there. So yeah, I'm just adding some new eyelet hooks, hangings, hangers that I get off of Amazon. And then I do a 17 gauge wire. I like the wire to be nice and strong because the, between the frame and the mirror, it is really heavy. Now this piece also was a second trip to that amazing garage sale along with the mirror and the bookshelf. <laughs> I don't think this one has any critters in it. It is part of an old library cabinet, I'm thinking. Now they had it marked $40 and then they said make offer and now this was towards the end of their last day. So I had the mirror um, and a couple other things and that bookshelf. So I think I said like 40 for the whole grouping of the stuff that I had, I believe. So yeah, so Chris has always wanted some glass shelving to put some of his antique tools in for display. So he was the one that was really spying this. And as you can tell, it is very rough. So the doors aren't really sliding in and out. It's missing a top piece. It's got some warping in the back. So it does need a lot of work, but it still has a plenty of pretties that he can envision so you see first he's working on getting the doors to open and close and it's just been out in the weather probably you know in a musty area basement shed barn what have you that is just build up compensation on the metal and the metal has rusted so it's not making it glide so easily so what he's doing now is just taking some sandpaper and sanding that rust off and now he's going to add some WD-40 to hopefully now these will slide in easier and open up because this will really be a waste if you can't open and close the doors. Okay, so now he's got both of those opening and closing, and now he needs to make a top. Yep, it didn't have a top. <laughs> so he's going to his wood stash, and I don't even, we don't even remember what we had from this wood or what we took this off of, but it is a nice wood. Doesn't look like it right now, but he's going to cut it to size and sand all that paint off and sand it down to make it pretty wood. But right now, at this moment, he is drilling pocket holes using the Craig Jig to be able to have something to screw the two pieces of wood together.
So now he did get the piece all sanded, got that paint removed off of it, took it down to some natural wood, and it's just made a nice, beautiful top. So now I'm just going to match up the stain as best as I can. So I'm using Waverly's Antiquing Wax and a little bit of the ink chalk paint to tone down the red to match up the beautiful finish on this. Now this these two cabinets are still that perfectly imperfect. There's some water spots, but the main thing that Chris wanted this for was to display some of his antique tools behind glass to protect them from getting dusty in the shop all the time. So after doing the top, I'm going to go ahead and spruce up the rest of the wood on there. It's been a long time since this poor wood has had any type of drink. And after that wax is dry, I'm going to go in and seal it with some polycrylic. So yeah, you can see some of the imperfections on the side but where he's going to hang it we're not really going to notice it but he's actually going to attach it to his wall his French cleat wall so what he's doing now is he's attaching a piece of plywood to the back of it so he actually can hang it up in the shop Oh my gosh, so what did you think of today's makeover? So we had the simple of some enamelware tins that were worth nothing. Um, so that was super exciting. I loved any chance I get to make something look like enamelware. I really love that farm implement paint. And yeah, the mirror. Yep, yep, that was little critter stuff. They were going to come in here rent free. Now, I've never really had anything like that happen. Oh my gosh, so that was, that was, oh my gosh, I don't even, yeah, I almost rather have had those ashes and those candlesticks again, oh my gosh, how, oh, anyway, we dealt with it, we took it, took care of it, yeah, anyway, that's been there, done that, a little bit of nightmares here and there about it, but anyway, I do love how the appliques just transformed formed those mirrors and yep we got that simple little window fix simple little I'm not sure if that's the reason I'm going to sell on them or not I don't know if yeah you know sometimes you test them out and sometimes you change them with something else you already have in your booth and then Chris absolutely loves those two shelves I think a lawyer's cupboard is that what those were library cupboard anyway it was pieces and parts of something that yeah, so he was super excited to have something to show off his antique tools. So let me know which one of those four were your favorite makeovers today. And have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way? So again, thank you again if you're part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and you're checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.